Welcome back. I'm Joy Reid in for Melissa Harris Perry. A shortage of water in the state of Texas have left, has left residents thirsty, frustrated and saying, what the frack? According to recent reports, the practice of hydraulic, frac hydraulic fracking, more commonly known as fracking, which is used for oil extraction, is making the drought problem in the Lone Star State much worse. These areas in red that you're seeing on the map are parts of Texas that are experiencing extreme and exceptional drought. The drought problem has become so bad that at least one Texas resident is actually wishing for a natural disaster to help. Rancher Buck Owens told The Guardian newspaper that, quote, we've got to get floods. We've got to get a hurricane to move up in our, con in our country and just saturate everything to replenish the aquifer. While fracking makes up less than 1% of water use in Texas, in certain counties, according to a University of Texas study, fracking uses up 50% of the water supply. But before we go any further, just what is fracking? I'm going to leave that explanation to All In's Chris Hayes, who not only explained the process, but also had some really cool animation made for his documentary, The Power of Politics, which premiered last night on MSNBC. The process begins by drilling down thousands of feet into the tough shale layer. The drill line goes vertical and then horizontal through the rock, sometimes as far as a mile. Then, under high-pressure water, chemicals and sand are pumped into the line, forcing fractures in the rock, releasing the oil, which is then pumped to the surface. This ingenious technology is termed hydraulic fracturing, or more commonly fracking, and has led to a modern-day oil rush. And while millions of gallons of water are required for each fracking job, most of the water used in hydraulic fracturing gets lost, with only 20 to 25 percent of the water recovered and the rest becoming waste. Take a look. Wastewater gushes up and gets stored for eventual disposal. All should be good until trouble finds a way in. A tear finds a way into the lining of a waste pit. Poisonous vapors find a way into your lungs. And cancer-causing chemicals find a way into your glass. Now, proponents of fracking note that the economic benefits that it provides in the form of jobs, along with evidence that hydraulic fracturing has contributed to reduced carbon emissions. While those may be good things, it is not the whole picture. Because people across the country are being asked at increasingly an increasing rate to weigh the benefits and consequences of fracking and decide between their wallets and their water, not to mention their well-being. Joining me from Texas is Luke Metzger, director of Environment Texas, a statewide citizen-based environmental advocacy organization. And at the table, Josh Fox, director and producer of the documentaries Gasland and Gasland 2, which look at the domestic natural gas drilling boom. Deborah Cipolla Dennis, a, a Texas native who lives in Dryden, New York, and successfully fought with her fellow residents against a big oil company who wanted to frack within their town's limits. Phaedra Ellis Lampkin, CEO of Green for All, an organization that is dedicated to improving the lives of all Americans through a clean energy economy. And Uni Blake, Director of Environmental Affairs for Hometown Energy Group, an independent energy consulting firm with clients in the oil and gas industry. Uh, and I want to go first to Luke, and I just want to ask you just to give us a sense of just how bad the drought problem is in Texas right now. Sure, uh, Joy. Yeah, the right now, as a map I think showed, about 98 percent of the state is suffering from some form of drought conditions. Um, we have uh, about uh, 60 percent. Our reservoirs are only at 60 percent of capacity. We have about 30 communities that the state expects to run out of water by the end of the year. Uh, the drought has caused about $8 billion in damages to our economy. Uh, 300 million trees died. Rivers have run dry, impacting uh, wildlife, including fish and endangered whooping cranes. And uh, it's it had a real toll. We're in a crisis right now here in Texas with and, this drought. And, and, Luke, you blame this on fracking? I mean, it, are, could there be other causes? Sure. Well, the crisis is caused by the drought, uh, but it's made worse by the wasteful water use uh, required for fracking. Okay. And I want to turn to you, Deborah. You're a Texas native, right? Even though now you're in New York, and we're going to talk about the New York case. But, I mean, how has fracking changed your home state of Texas? How has that technology changed? Because obviously the economic benefits are very mm -hmm. attractive to communities who need jobs. Right. And, uh, you know, my experience has been I, I lived in Texas. I grew up there. And when I go back there to visit my family, the landscape is completely different. When I fly into Dallas-Fort Worth Airport, you just see the, the land is scarred with these frack pads. And it is just a completely different place. 
than it was when I grew up. And, um, you know, the drought is, is affecting all the farmers and ranchers around there. They're having to sell their herds. They can't feed them. This has impacted my family. Um, and to take this water out of the, the water cycle, um, it's, it's using that water and it's actually making it to where it is not usable again uh, by adding these chemicals. And that's just, that's a terrible thing to do when the state is experiencing this drought. And, and Josh, I mean, your movie's Gaslin and Gaslin too obviously brought that, you know, the idea of the, uh, that you could light your water, I think is the most visual image. But uh, what people are talking about essentially is that the fracking process uses a lot of water, um, but the actual fluid that's being pumped into the ground um, is, is 98% water and sand, which sounds pretty benign, but it's that other 2%, yeah. I guess, that is at issue. You're talking about antibacterial agents and clay stabilizers and cross-linkers you, and things. I don't even know what they are. You don't want 2% of this kind of thing in your drinking water. Right. Um, but the issue here that we're facing in Texas, and it's important to define this, because the industry will come out and say, oh, we don't use that much water. A golf course uses more. But when you take the water permanently out of the hydrologic cycle, um, it, it means you're facing water bankruptcy. When you take that water and you inject it down into the ground and it never comes back up, it's different than an agricultural use because you're still in the cycle of replenishing the aquifer and watering the, the ground and so forth. With fracking, you're losing that water permanently. So that means it's stuck down there. And when you're talking about a drought that's caused in part by climate change, and when we know that natural gas means another 50 years of burning fossil fuels and an enormous rate of leakage of methane into the atmosphere, which is a very potent greenhouse gas, you're talking about a process of uh, developing a fuel that accelerates global warming. So it's a double whammy. You're losing the water down into the substrata, and it's never coming back out, and at the same time, you're worsening conditions that le led to the drought in the first place. And you know, I want to bring you in here, because obviously the, e the economic uh, argument for fracking is that you know you can produce jobs, but how does the industry argue against what you're hearing here, which is that the cost is too high in terms of the environment because you have global warming compounding problems like drought. First of all, I think we need to take a step back. Um, One percent of the water is being used by the gas industry. Ninety-nine percent is being used somewhere else. Why are we quibbling over 1%. Well, if the 1% is causing significant environmental damage, I mean, if you go back to that animation, the idea that, you know, people are feeling that they are being poisoned, essentially, by the outcomes of fracking, even if it is 1% of the water used, is the toll on potential health and on the water supply still too high to pay for the economic benefits you get back? You're starting with an assumption that people are being poisoned and that water is being poisoned. I didn't, you know, um, I testified once in front of the assembly and I was talking about pathways. How are people getting poisoned by this water? The animation over there showed somebody drinking a glass of some poisonous substance or the other. I don't know who would drink water if it comes through your tap and it's already, you know, got something in it. That's a pathway that's incomplete, okay? That means people are not being exposed. That having been said, Yes, the industry has had issues where um, they've had gas migration move into people's water, and I think that it's obvious can when just, it happens. Can I just say that I think the challenge is the people that pay the consequences of water that they can't drink from their faucets is people that can't afford bottled water. And the challenge for me with natural gas is it essentially is the same problem with other fossil fuels, but only made tenfold worse, which is we know who's likely to not, who's going to drink that water. It used to be just people of color in urban areas. Now it's white, poor people in rural areas. And so what we're saying is we know, I mean, I think what's so hard for me is 1% taking that chance is poor people and people who are desperate desperate for jobs. And, you know, I don't, you know, I, I heard people talking about other things. And for me, it's just what's right and wrong. Are we going to sacrifice the health and well-being of people that can least afford it so that other people can have cheaper fuel? And I just think we deserve better in this country. I think we should let Luke talk, speak to that, because this is what you're fighting, Luke. I mean, this is, this is the issue for you in Texas, is that your organization is saying that that cost is too high for the people that you represent. That's right. And the, the fact is that in 2011, uh, fracking required the use of about 26 billion gallons of water. That's enough water to fill up 40,000 uh, Olympic-sized swimming pools. So this is no drop in the bucket. And that water is especially being used in the most drought-prone parts of the state. And it's caused uh, some you know, ranchers' wells to run dry. And as Josh mentioned, this is unlike in forms of agriculture or other water use. This water is removed forever um, from our 
our water cycle. So uh, the one percent figure is a, is a red herring. You know, this is an enormous use of water, and so the the technology is available to to reuse and, and recycle some of this water. Uh, but the oil and gas industry hasn't even been willing to do that, uh, according to the Texas Oil and Gas Association. Um, in the Barnett Shale part of the state, which is around Dallas Fort Worth, uh, less than five percent of the water is is even recycled. Um, so it's a big problem here in Texas. Okay, I want everybody to stay with us because.